Now, when the Realme TV arrived, one thing that really impressed me is how it looks. Just look at the TV here. I think it looks sleek. See, what makes the Realme TV modern looking is the thin bezels on the sides and the top. The bezels here are 8.7 mm thin and I like the fact that these bezels are underneath the front glass unlike a lot of other TVs out there which have protruding bezels, almost all of them. The bottom bezel is a little thicker as it accommodates the Realme logo and you also get this light here indicating if it's on or not. Anyway, as you can see here, the TV looks great with the stand but I'm sure it'll look cool on a wall as well. Although yeah, you don't get a wall mount in the box so you'll have to get that separately. Moving on to the back here, it has the usual plastic design with all the ports you need. You get three HDMI ports, an AV port, two USB-A ports, a tuner port, a LAN port, the AV and the audio out port. So yep, the ports are pretty much covered. This is a 43 inch full HD LED display and I think it's a good looking display. I mean, the display quality is obviously very important TVs and I think Realme has done a very good job here. See, I have a lot of natural light coming in where I've set up the TV and on default display settings, the display looks bright, the viewing angles are great and it's very vibrant. Realme has also added its Chroma Boost engine to enhance the overall picture quality and yeah, I like how the display looks but there are different display modes here as well if you want a more customized look. You can set it to sport, movie, game, etc. or customize things on your own. Apart from that, the display here also supports HDR10 content and that's pretty interesting because most full HD TVs don't support HDR. Another great thing about the TV is the audio performance. The Realme TV comes with 24 watt quad stereo speakers with one full range speaker and a tweeter on each side of the TV. And there's Dolby audio support. Now having used the TV extensively in the last few days, I think the sound experience here is great. The clarity is nice, I did not notice any distortions at higher volumes and it gets pretty loud. Yes, the bass isn't that great, but it's decent enough for TV speakers, especially for a budget TV. Plus, like I said, there's Dolby Audio support, so you can enable it, choose from one of these modes and get a more surround sound experience if you like that. The setting of the TV is pretty straightforward experience, we all know that. However, I could not pair the Bluetooth remote for the very first time because there wasn't any feedback on the remote. But yeah, I paired it manually later on and I don't think it's an issue. Now coming to the Android TV experience, these are the pre-installed apps. You get Netflix, Prime Video, a live TV app for basically DTH, AI Point which just shows you all the apps, YouTube, Play Movies, Play Store, Pango Browser and Media Player for your local files. Yeah, you only get these essential apps and I like the inclusion of a browser and a media player because a lot of people just download them from the Play Store. I mean it's Android TV so you get the Play Store where you can get more apps like Disney Plus Hotstar, Sony Live which by the way has a horrible Android TV app and obviously more. You also get the Google Assistant which works well if you want to know the weather or anything about a new movie. There's also Chromecast built in so you can cast movies and shows from your phone or your PC with the Chrome browser. And you can even cast your smartphone screen, your PUBG sessions on the TV using the Google Home app. Although let me tell you that the experience isn't exactly aimed at gaming. Coming to the performance, the Realme TV comes with MediaTek's quad-core Cortex-A53 CPU with Mali 470 MP3 GPU and this chipset is the reason why this TV supports HDR10 and HLG. Anyway, there's also 1GB RAM and 8GB storage. Now, these are decent specs for a full HD TV because there are TVs with more RAM and storage at this price available. Anyway, specs aside, the TV has been performing well for me. I mostly watch Prime Video on Netflix on the TV or, you know, cast something from my phone. And in my usage, the TV has been solid with no hangups or issues whatsoever. Now, obviously, I have no idea on how well this TV will fare six months or an year away from now. But if you ask me, things do seem positive. This is a Bluetooth and IR remote that uses two AAA batteries. And yeah, I like this mode. First of all, it feels great in the hand. I don't know, it has this slightly rubberish plastic design that feels great in the hand. Then there's the fact that it's very lightweight, looks good and the buttons are tactile and pretty well placed. See, I hate it when the remote has buttons at the bottom. So yeah, this is a layout I like, although the volume buttons could have been better placed. Anyway, along with the usual buttons, you get dedicated buttons for Netflix, Prime Video, YouTube and of course Google Assistant. So yeah, overall, I think the remote here is pretty good. First up, I like the fact that it comes with Bluetooth 5.0 when most other TVs are still stuck on Bluetooth 4.2. But I don't like the fact that the TV does not have 5 GHz Wi-Fi support. Yes, most budget TVs do still only support 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi, be it the similar priced Mi 4A Pro or iFalcon's 43-inch TV or even we use 43-inch TV. The Realme TV is priced at Rs 21.99 and the competition includes Mi TV 4A Pro at the same price 
and the TCL i Falcon 43 inch TV at rupees 2099. Now, comparing things, all of these are Android TV TVs. When it comes to the display, the Realme TV trumps the Mi TV with HDR support, but the i Falcon TV is a 4K TV with HDR10 support. Yes, the TCL i Falcon TV offers 4K at a thousand rupees less than the Realme TV. Honestly, the i Falcon TV just seems like a better deal already, but let's compare more. When it comes to the speakers, the Realme TV has 24 watt quad stereo speakers, which are definitely better than the competition. Under the hood, the Realme TV and Mi TV come with Cortex A53 CPUs, while the i Falcon TV comes with an A55 CPU and it also has double the RAM and storage. Plus, among the three, the i Falcon TV is the only TV to include a wall mount in the box. Look, it's clear that the Realme TV is better than the Mi TV 4A Pro and other TVs like the VU 43 inch TV, but it does not beat the TCL offering. The TCL i Falcon TV is definitely more value for money and more future proof. I personally own the 50 inch version of this same i Falcon K31 series TV and I love it. To be honest, the Realme TV is one of the best looking TVs out there with 24 watt quad speakers that's probably better than the competition. So it's a good TV.